Good morning, YouTube. Louie here with the Bullion News of the Week. Welcome to Sunday. Let's get started with a review of the gold market. Uh, gold finished the week at 2,444, and silver finished the week at 28.56. Gold uh, clearly on a tear here, trying to get back to 2,500. Kind of a high in gold. And silver struggling to regain 29 and go above it. I think 29 is a pretty critical level for silver to regain. But uh, it held its own on Friday in, in spite of a massive market sell-off. Uh, let's go over to... Okay, I wanted to show you really quickly. Um, this is the S&P 500 uh, year-to-date chart. So the S&P 500 is now down... Um, Where's the price? Down from uh, uh, 56.67 and it closed at 54.46. So S&P down about 200 points uh, over the last, uh, let's see, from July 17th to August 1st, so the last two, three weeks. Will the sell-off continue? Uh, I don't know, not much of a recovery on Friday and people clearly uh, clear, clearing out of tech as fast as they can as recession looms. Uh, you know that we had a higher unemployment number and that just took, uh, that, that took the top right off um, the stock market. In spite of uh, projections for lower long-term interest rates and lower short-term interest rates, and it used to be that uh, bad news was good news, but uh, I think the news is getting a little too bad here, and now even lower interest rates are not saving the stock market. So we'll have to see where that winds up uh, for the S&P. Uh, could we retrace all the way back to uh, 5,000? I think that is a pretty logical uh, spot to expect a bounce. Or could we go all the way back to February's numbers of uh, 4,000? 49.53. Well, I think somewhere in there the market will probably bottom. But you never get going with all, you never know with all the algorithmic trading uh, when this thing starts falling, it could really fall. Uh, now, if you invest in silver, you may want to take a look at this chart. We've got the, uh, the, the uh, red line being SLV as a proxy for silver. I know it's not silver, but it's just a proxy here. And the S&P being the blue line. Well, did you know on a year-to-date basis that uh, silver has outperformed the S&P 500? Dividends excluded, okay, and I'll, I'll give you that. There's a couple percent dividends that are not reflected here. But uh, starting off uh, around uh, January, when they were even, well, now we have the S&P is up 13.6%, and SLV is up 23.65%. Uh, where would you rather have your money this year? Well, silver apparently is doing pretty darn well, and uh, we have not made a lower, a, lower low, uh, a lower low here. We're still above the recent low of um, 24.05, trying to bottom in here in the 28s. Um, so we'll have to see if the uptrend resumes, but clearly if silver busts through, um, uh, I don't know what the equivalent of uh, 2861 SLV is, but I think uh, we have to get, uh, you know, get through 29, and then we can resume our march above 30, hopefully. Okay, so that's what's going on in the stock market. Uh, now, you may also want to compare uh, the S&P to Bitcoin. Now, I notice Bitcoin has been selling off. Uh, unlike silver, it's taken a real dump here. Uh, the Bitcoin price currently is... Uh, where'd the prices go? Uh, Bitcoin price as of right now is 60866 it was trying to break out there. That is the yellow line. It was really trying to break out. It was in a bullish, uh, a bearish phase here for a while, went back to a bullish phase, and now Bitcoin is selling off again as uh, liquidity concerns obviously are pulling money out of the market rapidly. So uh, Bitcoin above the S&P, uh, Bitcoin up 37% for the year, S&P up 12.73. Okay, and here is the 10-year. So uh, again, the big news in the market was uh, weakening labor, more people out of work, 
uh, massive layoffs at Intel, Intel in big trouble, and actually um, a lot of people, uh, more people out of work than uh, any time in recent history. So, uh, you know, it looks like uh, we have not quite conquered inflation, but we are losing our jobs and uh, more people out of work. That will put a crimp in the economy for sure. Getting over to the U.S. Mint. Okay, you know the Morgan dollars are up at $91 for this uh, little hunk of silver. I thought you may want to take a look uh, over at the uh, production. Uh, they have sold 172,000 Morgans. And there are 275,000 uh, potentially to be minted. So flippy flop, flop, flop. All right, that's what happened to that coin. That round, it's a round actually. No, it's a coin. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, yeah, just like we thought, no, nobody is buying that to speak of. Although 172,000, I guess a few people bought it to continue their collection, but not much hope of aftermarket value. Okay, I want to get over to Palladium real quickly, and very few people invest in Palladium, but this article from uh, CoinWorld tells us that the 2024 W Palladium coin is going to be released uh, probably in a couple months, two, three months, and uh, this is interesting. Now, what I find interesting about the Palladium uh, Eagle is, uh, you know, there, there was a time when Palladium was $3,000 an ounce, now it's flirting with $800, and uh, they, these are beautiful coins, um, and they are not making many of them. I doubt they'll even continue making them into the future. Mintage this year is going to be $7,500, <clears throat> and I thought you would want to take a look at last year. Now, the mintage last year was 6000 so I'm not sure why they raised the mintage to 7500 but I would expect the price to come down quite a bit. Now here is um, what will what was released last year at 1850 with a mintage of 6,000 and uh, still for sale. So they didn't sell 6,000, but for some reason they've raised the mintage on these. Now uh, this may have to do with aftermarket performance. Uh, they're performing pretty well in the aftermarket. These are sold items. 2500 for a slabbed version. Here's a low price, 1700 uh, here's 1800 So they are still selling in the aftermarket and uh, moving back to, uh, where did I wind up here? Uh, so uh, yeah, they're, they're selling for 1850 at the Mint and pretty much break even or a little lower than that uh, on eBay. But uh, the price of Palladium over time, look what has happened since $3,000, uh, the spike. And I believe that was around the time of the 2022 Palladium Eagle, uh, which was a very hot coin. I think it sold out in maybe three days. But uh, look at it. We went from $3,200 Palladium down to uh, $897 Palladium. Palladium being below platinum, it's often above it. But uh, look at that diminished. So uh, last year... Uh, if we go back to 23, if Palladium was selling for 50% more, what will the price of the Palladium Eagle be um, over at the U.S. Mint in 2024? Uh, and uh, I don't think I queued that up, did I? No. But let's go ahead and take a look. I don't think they've released the pricing, but I think that's t worth taking a look at. Uh, we got to get out, I believe, to September... Here it is, September 5th, the Palladium coin is coming out. And I believe that they are linked uh, to uh, spot prices in some way with some arcane formula. But uh, we could see the price on this coin come out at a much lower price, maybe $1,500, maybe $1,400. I'll be very curious about that, and I'll be keeping an eye on it. Uh, we'll have to see if that may be a sleeper. But uh, they did uh, a household order, order limit of 10. That's interesting. But uh, they did raise the mintage uh, according to Coin World. So um, uh, we'll have to see if we have a sellout on that. Okay, moving forward. 
and we have all right we've got you know everybody is worried about the national debt uh, this is an article uh, this is a video from uh, uh, Joe Kuhn uh, he does retirement videos and I do follow him and he's talking about changes he's making to his retirement account um, if you uh, you know if you're worried about 35 trillion dollar debt well, uh, if you are, then you clearly need to have some gold and probably some silver as well. Although he does not uh, flirt with precious metals, big mistake on his part, I believe. But uh, he talks about uh, the way that he's protecting his retirement portfolio. And uh, um, part of that has to do with the purchase of real assets. Um, and part of that has to do with housing, um, which I think housing could be ready for a hit here. You know, we've had uh, mortgage rates come down recently quite a bit, which could spur more selling. And I think when the selling uh, really gets going in the stock market, I think a lot of inventory is going to come back on the market. And I think that's going to depress housing prices just as we enter a, a recession or a minimum of a slowdown. So, um, yeah, I'd watch out for housing in terms of putting a lot of money into housing right now. I'd look for a downturn in that. Um, and precious metals clearly um, are worth looking at. Um, but uh, the thing you may want to take a look at now if you are um, if you are planning for retirement or if you're just managing a portfolio outside of silver and gold and many people put a cap on their silver and gold um, investments um, you know 10 15 20 percent above that you're betting the ranch on silver and gold and some people do um, but uh, most people have other assets as well. If you don't have any other assets, you probably wouldn't be buying gold and silver. You probably ought to start out by looking at your whole portfolio. But I thought you may want to take a look at the, uh, the, bond, the uh, CD and bond offerings on E-Trade. And uh, they were paying 5.5%. I have some CDs uh, earning 55 now in my retirement account. Um, now, many people are afraid of long bonds. So here we are with treasuries. And as you get out to five years um, or even 30 years, you can earn 4.11, 4.2%. But uh, there's great fear, at least in our community, that the $35 trillion debt will um, undermine the long-term bond market. And even if the Fed cuts rates, we may see the long rates start to spike higher. So if you're worried about that, you don't have to buy long bonds, but you can buy short-term treasuries. Uh, paying 5.12% currently for a three-month treasury, and you can and uh, you could buy, you know, I don't know, one-year treasuries, uh, paying 4.3, just a little bit of pre of principal risk there, depending how uh, rates go in the long term. But you can also buy CDs. So right now you can get a one or a two or a three-year CD, paying about 5%. And I know we don't trust the banks, okay? So uh, if that is your concern, you would not do this. And if you think the government is going bankrupt uh, imminently, you wouldn't buy treasuries. But I just want to point this out for those of you that have money sitting in a savings account or in your mattress. You may want to consider earning 5% on your money over time if you do that and you use uh, retirement software like newretirement.com, something I definitely um, um, suggest you look at free trial right now link in the description uh, you can plan your retirement for not only your gold and silver you can plan a rate of return for gold and silver and hope it happens but you can also plan um, what your other assets will will uh, be like uh, what the rate of return is what the inflation is your social security payout if you think you're going to draw that pensions and other investments in the stock market if you have that so uh, do check out newretirement.com and if you want to pick up cds one of the easiest ways to do it is open an e-trade account um, and uh, pick them up right here. Th this is a click of a button. You don't have to go to the bank and you'll get higher rates. Okay? And the money comes out of your brokerage account and at the end of the term the money with interest comes back. Um, who was it that said that the, the, the seventh wonder of the world or something is compound interest? 
Well, don't forget about the rest of your money. Um, so uh, I'm off the topic of bullion news here. I think that was uh, I. I think that was uh, uh, God Isaac Newton. No, it wasn't Isaac Newton. Albert Einstein. I think it was Albert Einstein that said that. So don't don't ignore your non-precious metals cash. Okay, moving over to um, YouTube. Um, uh, no, wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to finish up with um, the the best deal of the week is over at Costco. And you can find all these deals on my website, bestsilvergolddeals.com. It's totally free, and I send out alerts to subscribers uh, letting them know when uh, this stuff comes back in stock. But uh, these are not even selling out. People are so broke and scared. Um, and uh, maybe losing a little faith in silver. I don't know. I don't know why you would. You saw the return so far, th so far this year. Um, but uh, you can still pick up silver eagles on Costco at six fifty a tube for spanking new two thousand twenty four silver eagles. They come in a very nice little tube there, and that is thirty two fifty an eagle. Now, if you think that's too much. For an eagle, well, look how what it is after credit card rebate. So, thirty-two fifty times 0.98. If you have a two percent rebate credit card, many of us do. Again, recommendations on my website. Okay, that'll put you at thirty-one eighty-five. Many people also have the Executive Club membership, which get which gets you another two percent off times 0.98, and I know this is not going to be quite the right number, but you're, you're a little over $31 in Eagle if you have those uh, two things, a good credit card and the Executive Club membership. And the Executive Club membership um, costs $130, I believe. Let's get over there. So um, $120, they're going to raise the price on that. There's your 2% reward, which comes at year end. Uh, the Gold Star membership will not get you, um, uh, I don't think the Gold membership gets you 2% back. No, see, they've X'd it out. So, but you can also get into Costco and buy your paper products and whatnot. So it's a, it's a good deal. I mean, $120, uh, you can buy that Eagle deal over and over and over again. You just have to wait for the next day or the next release after they sell out. So uh, you get five at a time if you want to do that. Um, if you got five uh, at one time, then that would be five into 120, about 25 bucks. So uh, yeah, you, you know, you'd pay about 25 bucks more a tube because of the Executive Club membership, and then it would be free for the rest of the year. So uh, definitely consider that. Okay, and I just wanted to take a look at new coins. I want to miss out on some coins that are looking good in the aftermarket. We're over at Monument Metals, uh, where they've got a pretty good sale on junk silver right now. Um, but I uh, just wanted to point out again to you this uh, Tudor Dragon. I think it's going to do really well in the aftermarket. Here you can pick the 10 ounce up for $325. All right, 10 ounce Tudor Dragon. I'm not sure what the mintage will be on that. Um, and you can also pick up the one ounce Tudor Dragon for, uh, I'm sorry, the two ounce Tudor Dragon for um, 64.22. That's about 32 bucks an ounce. Really bitching coin there. I do recommend you put it in a capsule and you shrink wrap it if you pick that up. And let's see what else is interesting out there this morning. Um, and uh, we've got what? We've got what? Let me get to a new, let me get to the home screen. Okay, so uh, we've got silver commemoratives, 199 over melt. Uh, no, I wouldn't buy those. I'd get regular junk. Is junk going out of stock everywhere? I don't know. I see premiums rising a little bit. You can get a buffalo for 30.21. And uh, here is their junk deal, uh, 21.5 times face. Uh, somewhere around there is what you're going to pay for junk this morning. Okay, anything else new? All right, nope, nothing else happening there. Okay, and just finishing up at the website, if you'd like to see uh, where you can get the cheapest price on gold, silver, platinum, palladium, uh, go ahead and check out the website and subscribe, and we'll let you know what's up as soon as we know what's up. And then you can also get into the chat room and ask the guys and the gals what they are doing 
Um, here is the metal calc value. Yeah, this is, a, we were talking about the melt value of nickel here. Um, somebody said that they got, they bought the deal over on eBay. Let me get over there. Somebody said they got this deal. Uh, let me go to eBay really quickly. This is really an interesting comment. And I can't, can't believe it. Uh, and we often beat these prices on eBay. Um, but there is a uh, large lot of silver rounds. Okay, somebody said they got this deal here. And Liberty Coin sent them tubes of silver eagles. Now, ain't that the craziest thing ever? And what I responded was, yeah, well, somebody needs to get fired over at Liberty Coin because that is crazy. I'm not saying that'll happen to you, but look how cheap these one ounce rounds are. $29.95 for a hundred lot. And then if you have a 3% credit card, like the PayPal credit card or the American Express credit cards that I recommend, um, you get that for about uh, 29 even, just a hair over spot there, about 40 cents over spot. And if they send you eagles, wouldn't that be cool? Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is uh, people uh, keep asking about how to use the Capital One uh, credit card deal. Let me get to it here. This is the Capital One Quicksilver card. Um, and this will be my last uh, point this morning. If you don't need to know about that, you can tune out now, but give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. Um, so here we are with the Capital One Quicksilver card coming up right here. Okay, uh, I, still, I keep getting this question about the Capital One Quicksilver card. Okay, when you sign up for the Capital One Quicksilver card, here's a link, um, you'll get 1.5% everywhere you shop. And you can get that on eBay, no problem, checking out through, uh, through eBay. The Capital One Quicksilver card will entitle you to kicker deals everywhere from Chewy to, you know, um, Best Buy, Home Depot, wherever. They have these kicker deals, which uh, can be 2%, 4%, sometimes 10%. And uh, people will click through the Capital One. Uh, so you go to the Capital One credit card site. You click through this site here where it says extra 4% cash back. That will activate a 4% deal on eBay. When you get to eBay, you check out using your PayPal um, your PayPal credit card, which will get you 3% cash back, and you have doubled your rebates. You're going to get 4% from Capital One uh, within a, a few days, actually. Um, and then you're going to get 3% with that PayPal card, which I recommend on eBay. And a total of 7%, I just showed this on my Friday video, or maybe it was my Saturday video, where um, I bought an iPhone and I got 7% I got off. You don't have to use the Capital One card, so you get the kicker, then you pair that with a better credit card, a PayPal card, or even the Amex card. If you use the American Express card, the way to get 3% off on eBay, um, so, by the way, this is not supposed to work for precious metals, and it often won't. It sometimes will. Somebody just said they made a mistake, and they got an extra 10% off on, uh, on some precious metals. But that would be an error on Capital One's part. Uh, this, doesn't, this excludes gold and silver. But if you're buying something like an iPhone, um, so you buy a, four, a $500 iPhone, you click through Capital One, you pay with PayPal or American Express by checking out through PayPal with the American Express that being the default card, and you're going to get 7% back on anything you buy other than precious metals. You can try it for precious metals, but probably won't work. So there you go. That's the deal on the Quicksilver card, and I believe that's about all I have to tell you today. I hope you have a great Sunday. Enjoy the crazy markets, and uh, let's just take another look at uh, what's going on with the markets here. So at some point, for those of you that are out of the markets, you may want to consider getting back in. If we have a significant crash and you're in fixed income, you may want to put some more money back in the markets. Um, if metals spike, which they often do in a falling interest rate, falling dollar environment, there's a point where you may want to take some metals off the table and move back into the stock market. I mean, the COVID lows were down here at S&P 29, 2900. 
okay? So there's a point where there's going to be some rotation happening. And right now you can also, with the GSR, I mean, uh, GSR chart, and then I will make this my last thing. Um, so here we are. We are still at 85 GSR. We are really tippy-top high on silver, having somewhat to do with people predicting recession. But, uh, you know, it, it would be a good time to swap gold for silver. Now, I'm not going to do it because I've depleted my gold stock by doing that too many times. And then, the, the, you know, you don't get that many opportunities to switch back from silver to gold. The last opportunity was at 73, and that was not low enough for me. I tend to like 65. Um, let's see if we can get out to a 10-year chart on the GSR. You know, around 65 to 68 is what I'm waiting for for a swap back. Um, maybe 70. So, uh, but here we are at 85, and with upside to 90, I guess, if you really want to look at this on a long-term perspective, and downside easily to 76, or it was 72 not that long ago. Uh, 74, but I thought it hit 72 in a day. So, um, you know, between 85 and 75, uh, there's a trade to be made there, and you could be swapping out gold here. Uh, gold is on a tear, but I think it's getting kind of pricey, up around 2,500. Um, and, you know, gold could move from uh, 25, 2475 up to uh, 2600 I mean, I think that could happen. But silver could easily move from $28 to 35 You do the math and tell me what you'd rather own over the next six months. Okay, that's all I'll say, but I have not swapped out. I've got down to my lower, my lowest level of gold I want to have, so I need to see the ratio reverse before I do, um, before I get my gold back. Okay, and that is the trap in doing those trades. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Check out all my videos. Give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing here, and I hope you enjoyed the bullion news of the week. Bye for now.